Hey guys, Thomas here, and today I'm going to be talking about how to create event-driven applications in Java, um, and also how to use my library that makes it really easy to do so. So first off, I'd like to mention that my other YouTube account, Kironi Weezy, was actually banned for spamming, scamming, and commercially deceptive content, but I don't really know why it happened, because I never really spammed, or actually I never even spoken in texts on the platform other than in video description of course which don't happen to be spam anyway so I think it's pretty silly that I got banned but whatever alright so getting off topic I want to explain what an event driven application is typically Java applications are driven by calling functions which actually perform the modifications to the final state for whatever period of time you need to check the state of objects um, however in an event driven application the functional behavior that actually determines the state is separated from the actual behavior type. So you're able to create one function that can dispatch some type that can even include say in itself, which is really awesome, to an entire registry of listeners. And uh, if you refer to such a type, it's usually called an event. So for example, somebody riding a bike, um, some state associated uh, might be say the person who's riding the bike and the bike type and you might call it type bike riding event or riding bug event whatever you choose so uh, one large issue in developing event driven applications in Java was that Java actually had no means of determining as to what functionality type should actually be called and the only way to reasonably type behaviors was through an execution logic interface like runnable so it was really a pain to actually develop event driven applications because you have to implement some execution logic that needed to be executed and by almost no means other than adding further complexity such as a should execute function could a running environment actually determine whether or not the logicality should be executed so on top of that you're unable to encapsulate state because since you have that overlying actual interface the underlying implementation details are hidden uh, but in Java 5 came annotations which allowed you to configure mark and etc. on functions and you're able to scan those at runtime and source time scan with source time scanning. Um, so to make creating an event driven application in Java really a breeze I've made a library called EOD uh, it stands for ease of development but you guys shouldn't be fooled because EOD as the name suggests is not just a library that's for an event system but it actually brings ease of development in all areas uh, of your Java application development. And as a plus, uh, it works perfectly with existing dependency injection frameworks like Google Juice, and it works really good with aspect oriented programming as well. So let's get started actually learning about how to use the library. So let me just make a class. We'll call it final. Uh, well, we'll have it final, sorry. Um, something else I like to mention is that my keyboard is basically completely broken, and especially the S key. Alright, <laughs> so let's create an event manager. Alright, so um, an event ma manager is used to register listeners and you're also able to dispatch events to the listeners you actually registered. So let's create a test event. Let's show you guys how to actually create an event type. Oops, I forgot to uncheck uh, the creation of the main method. Anyway, to create an event, all you have to do is implement event. And there is no behavior dependencies as you can see I don't have to do anything else this is a valid event and you can use it throughout the platform and of course you can add some nice state so what better state than some boolean called fun so is this test event fun uh, we'll determine that in the constructor keyboard is so broken okay um, so yeah now I'm going to show you guys something else called an event listener and call it test listener and let's uncheck that this time <clears throat> and again no behavior dependencies in this either 
So there you go. That is a valid event listener now. So to handle an event, uh, you can read in the documentation that um, an event uh, listener expresses interest in handling some set of event types by implementing methods annotated by event handler and contain the event type as a message single argument. So if we go over to the event handler documentations, we can see uh, something simpler than that. Um, they should only have one argument, which is the event type that they should handle. So, for example, let's handle test event. We can call the behavior anything we want. So I'll say on test, and then we need our type as the first uh, argument, and you can also have the uh, parameter name be whatever you want. So we'll just say testing is it fun and then we'll print out the uh, state associated. So as you guys can see the state does carry over because our actual event type is right up there. Alright so now I'll show you guys this in action. Uh, manager has of course as I mentioned before two behaviors one to dispatch an event and another to register a listener so we'll register our listener in a new instance of it and then let's dispatch a test event and yeah it will kinda of be fun, it is kinda of fun alright so let's run this and we'll see testing is it fun? true so that's pretty magical um, so now let me let me show you guys some more features alright um, because this is very similar to Alkine uh, if you guys remember my older library that I used for my MSN library and stuff like that um, it's very similar it's also very similar to Bucket um, but it fixes some of the issues that were apparent in Bucket. Alright, so let me show you guys some more features. One really cool feature is cancellation. And to make an event can oops, sorry. Not doing that on the right. Alright, to make an event cancelable, all you have to do is extend cancelable event. And there you go. Now you'll see in your test listener, uh, it adds new behaviors. So you're able to check if the event is cancelled and you're also able to set it to be cancelled alright so let me just show you guys how that works let's create a um, well first of all let's rename this to well let's add number one so we can differentiate um, and then let's create another event listener and I'll call it test listener 2 rename that up there put that like that alright so I'm going to cancel the event in here and back to our test. Copy that. <clears throat> okay. So, as you can see, only um, test lister one uh, actually runs, and then since it's canceled, it'll abort, and test lister two won't have the chance to be run. Okay, so now I'm going to introduce you guys to priorities. Um, priorities are really cool. There's six priorities, so let me sh let me show you guys them. All right, six priorities. Um, so you guys can read the documentation. Lowest is the lowest priority. So if you guys read the documentation, event calls of very low importance and should be ran first to allow other listeners to further customize the final state of the event. And now the highest priority that's available is monitor. Um, event is listened to solely uh, solely for monitoring the outcome of an event. Um, and if you are using the monitor priority, you shouldn't make any modifications to the uh, state. This is just for monitoring the outcome state. All right. And highest is your standard like non-monitor um, priority, and normal is right in the middle. Okay. And by default, uh, the event priority is normal. So let's just say that we want um, we want test listener to be ran after test list, uh, listener two. So high um, will be ran after uh, normal, which this is normal by default. If you guys go and look at the source, which is available everywhere, default is normal. 
So that would mean when we run this, you'll be able to see that Test Cluster 2 actually gets ran first, and then Test Cluster 1 uh, happens. And same deal if we cancel this in here, event uh, listener 1 won't handle. Okay? So that's really nice. Um, and of course, this works with many uh, event listeners. So I'll make test listener 3. Let's just copy it. Rename that. And let me show you guys what happens if uh, you set this to monitor. Alright, and we'll remove cancellation from here. And here. And then, uh, according to our order, this should run first because this is normal. Then this second, then this third. Oh, and I also need to register it. So, as you guys can see, it is correct. Test listener 2 first, then test listener 1 because it has high priority, and then finally this last. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope I brought some knowledge to you guys about how to use um, this actual system and really that's about it. So I hope you guys do make use of my library um, and again it has full support for Juice in uh, Spring um, but I don't exactly use Spring very much so you know, have to uh, pardon me on that. Um, so yeah I, I hope you guys happy developing with EOD and you guys should also check out the other features in EOD such as marking annotations like not implemented and not supported. Anyway, see you guys, do whatever. Thanks for watching. Bye.